Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of CRPG Character Crossovers, where we take our favorite characters from CRPG Crossovers and see how badly they would fit into a game with a completely different set of rules from where they're normally at. And for those of you wondering who I'm talking about today, well, if you don't know who this guy is, welcome to the CRPG genre. We play games that are overly complicated just to make lore that stretches for thousands of miles on Wikipedia. <laughs> This is Minsk. Minsk is, of course, the <coughs> poster child of the Baldur's Gate series. Who somehow became less poster childy in a third game, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yes, we're going to talk about Minsk the Ranger, one of the most iconic and amazing characters out there, a staple of every good party, because everybody knows how memorable and awesome the uh, Minsk usually is as a character, even if the class that he is usually sucks. And <laughs> we're going to talk about the rangers that he can be right now. So the ranger, uh, well, okay. I, I, I mean, it, it doesn't matter which... Yeah, oh, okay, it's working. It doesn't matter which edition of D&D &D or even what tabletop game we're talking about. The ranger usually tends to just, you know, get a lot of flack because unfortunately they're the type of warrior that's, well... They're kind of like the bard of the warriors, and even then, they don't have any sort of uh, standout identity that other bards have. And this can be particularly vexing in the first edition Pathfinder, simply because there are so many classes that get their own uh, animal pets uh, to fight alongside them. Uh, rogues already have eva evasions. Um, favorite enemy is a cool ability that is unfortunately very situational. And, of course, favorite terrain sucks donkey balls. But, anyway, that doesn't change the fact that Minsk is someone I'm going to talk about because he's uh, fun, charismatic. He can definitely do a lot of roleplay with the guy. And, moreover, I've even found a few um, classes that I think really hold up. Now, with a lot of the uh, Baldur's Gate 3 companions I'm going to talk about, I always feel like the base class is never a bad choice for them. Simply because, no matter, even if the base class doesn't offer a lot in its own right, it's a good uh good way to introduce them uh into the world especially for those who you know like a class that you know <clears throat> tends to stick to the basic simple identity of what the class is there are a couple others i thought were really really cool uh one in particular being the demon slayer which unlike the god awful ranger is absolutely amazing because it basically <laughs> it's basically okay you remember the archer kit from the first two Baldur's Gate games. Just take that, point it at demons, and amplify everything, and that's what you get. So yeah, it's a really good class. And the reason I think this uh, fits really well with Minsk is because of the fact that Minsk, I swear to God, I uh, if he isn't, you know, hanging out with his hamster boo or looking for Weisharn witches to defend, he's just out there stomping evil. It's, it's one of his favorite things to do. It's like, you know... What he loves to do, and seeing as how demons are usually the absolute epitome of the <clears throat> deepest depravity of evil you could be, Minsk would stop at nothing to become a demon slayer and just absolutely kick the crap out of him with everything he has. And yeah, it's it's a really good class for him, I certainly think. Um, uh, yeah, definitely a good choice there. Um, and then the other one that really kind of spoke to me this is a, I believe it's a modded class, because I've never heard of this uh, anywhere. Um, in addition to having probably one of the longest uh, uh, class summaries, which is really cool. Uh, whoever wrote that did a nice job. Uh, I like this because even if, you know, Baldur's Gate 3, or the Baldur's Gate Rangers, I should say, weren't comparable to the Witch Guard of Pathfinder and that they didn't get, you know, which powers the way they did. This, I think, works with Minsk incredibly well simply because of the fact that one of his big duties in the first Baldur's Gate game was to keep an eye on Dinah Hair, uh, his charge from Rashomon, and she was actually referred to as a witch in that game, and as such, I think it's safe to say whoever um, put this class together was likely a huge fan of uh, Minsk and wanted to kind of uh, put a representation of that in this game and maybe even give a little bit of a uh, buff in terms of power. 
Um, they actually get some uh, witch spells and can even get a patron, which is absolutely amazing. And they have a few uh, abilities that are comparable to a paladin. Now, they do fall off a bit with the lack of endurance and, unfortunately, the lack of a hunter's bond. Which, even then, isn't really that big of a deal because, unfortunately, there is no miniature giant space hamster animal companion. Uh, if someone from Nexus Mods could take care of that, that would be great. <laughs> but... But no, seriously, so it's it's a really cool idea, and I think it's uh, an interesting uh, choice for sure. So, uh, obviously, a human. Feats and skilled, always a good choice, and there we go. Now, I don't know if his tattoo is in this game. I genuinely doubt it is, but it's not a big deal. Um, as far as what his background would be? Oh my goodness, that's a good question. Now, I genuinely feel like, um, even if he doesn't... I mean, Minsk would never be caught dead with a short sword. He'd want the biggest sword in the building. But considering he is one of those guys that, you know, defends his witch from danger, I think a guard background would not be a bad choice at all. And considering rangers are usually pretty good with ranged weapons... As well, uh, light crossbows, not a bad uh, choice in that uh, regard. I can't really think of anything else in particular that suits him. I mean, he came from an actual uh, kingdom in the north, so... Okay, so next up we have his uh, attributes. Now, this is from Baldur's Gate 3, and you can easily tell it's from Baldur's Gate 3 because they absolutely screwed the ever-living fuck up out of his attributes. It's like... I mean... No, that's not to say, you know, Minsk wasn't, you know, smart enough to handle himself in combat or even take care of himself, but there is nothing about this guy whatsoever that says, oh, he was super duper wise. So, fuck that garbage, we're taking that all away and we're putting it all in strength, okay? Why in the world he had 12 strength in that game is beyond me. It's just, I, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just so stupid. Um, in fact, I would even, I mean, I wouldn't hurt, I wouldn't be offended if he was made even dumber, just so we could get more constitution out of him, and, uh, mm, eh, I don't know. Now, the only problem, of course, is the witch guard probably, oh, well, it's divine castor, isn't it? Probably would use, you know what, it doesn't matter. I mean, I guess if you want, if you had to make him more wiser to be his, uh, that, that would be my, my case. In fact, actually, let me go back here real quick. Well, okay, there are rangers always uh, with some casters anyway, but... I never really even used the ranger to cast spells all that much, even in the old Baldur's Gate games, because the spells they got just were very, very lackluster. And I mean, when you think about it, rangers these days are lucky to get the spells that they did. I mean, back in Baldur's Gate 1, they didn't get spells until level freaking 9. That wasn't very fun. Um, as far as his skills, which I have four points somehow? Wow. Really? Oh, well... I mean, humans, I guess, do get extra skill points. It's not that big a deal. But yeah, I definitely would be athletics. He's not stealthy. Shut the hell up. He'd know a lot about, uh, Osvin. And, um, persuasion is kind of an odd duck for him, I guess. But no doubt he's someone who likes to, you know, let people know that, uh, when Minsk is in town, they have nothing to fear. Because, you know, they'll keep him safe. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, feats. You know, the guy is pretty much a meleeer for sure, as far, um, so, for me, you can't go wrong with anything, uh, that gets him going in, uh, melee combat, especially if it just so happens to be the Great Sword, because, as he says in Baldur's Gate 2, if his weapon has no effect, he thinks he needs a bigger sword, and he'll, of course, hit his enemies as hard as possible, and... Oh, man. I, I can't even remember what his uh, favorite enemy was in Baldur's Gate 1. Not like it really even mattered. I don't think it was that good of a choice. I think it was Ogres. Wasn't it Ogres? Yeah, it was freaking Ogres, which is stupid. But, eh, at the end of let's see. Unfortunately, if you're not a Demon Slayer, you can't pick these because this game hates you. <laughs> uh, regardless, as far as, um, well, I think what his uh, favorite... I mean, really... Unless you pick the demons, I, I, I think you could pick any of these, 
Honest to goodness, seriously. Just any of them. Why the hell not? Just pick whatever you want. Um, anything that definitely could be evil for sure, you know. Um, <laughs> hey, let's pick the vermin. Those rats swarms won't know what hit them. Uh, we'll just use that as an example. Like I said, you can pick any of them. Deities. If Minsk has a deity, I have no idea what it is. He doesn't seem like the type to really worship uh, anything in particular. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything as far as religion goes, so I don't think anything, I mean... I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I guess if you really wanted him to be uh, religious, though, um, certainly anything that's related to nature or animals or otherwise just being good and just, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, Minsk for me seems like the sort of person who'd rather, you know, actually go out there and kick evil in the butt than just sit around and pray to a god. And yeah, um, this for sure. In fact, this is his, this is his uh, official alignment in the first two Baldur's Gate games. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, as far as this thing goes, let's see here. Oh, great. The ranger has a hood. That's... Really? Why'd you put a hood on him? All right, never mind. <laughs> well, that's ruined. Uh, war paint. What's the closest thing? Can we even see war paint on this thing? Uh, I guess we can. Yeah, that's great. Um... But that being said, if I remember correctly, I believe the last hairstyle is bald, so that certainly works out. Yeah, there's... Because I've been I've, I've been through some of these uh, war paints when I went over Lazel, and I don't think there's any in particular that really, you know, speak to Minsk's, like, forehead tattoos. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the closest thing I'm seeing to something that kind of dominates head and has very little elsewhere in the face so if you wanted to go with that one you certainly could here's another good one that i kind of like it's a little bit there's a little on the cheeks but nothing in particular uh and of course it would be an absolute crime if we made it anything other than purple so there you go ah uh, brave works for me brave for sure this guy will just wade into danger without a second thought regardless of how bad it is so and of course this is all pretty much uh self-explanatory but that's in my mind is how it's it's one idea i have of you know getting minsk going in the adventure and then of course where you take the guy is entirely up to you because that's the cool thing about uh past the rpg characters they had a they had a de definitive starting point but where you took them was usually you know entirely your decision so that's how I would start Minsk. How would you start Minsk? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, I wish you interesting adventures.